Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Hurricane Dorian has ravaged the Bahamas. 43 dead, perhaps over a thousand missing. Today we interview Roscoe Thompson, who is in government from the Bahamas. We need to help them. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But on today's show, we have a special guest, live via Skype from the Bahamas, is my new friend, Roscoe Thompson, who is in the government on one of the islands in the Bahamas, and is the 14th generation son of original Bahamian immigrants, of course, to the former British colony. Welcome to the program, Roscoe Thompson. How are you today, sir? I am good, thank you for having me uh, live on your show. Well, it's so nice to meet you and please accept America's condolences and regrets for the terrible destruction of Hurricane Dorian. What is the latest and, and what do you know? Uh, as of yesterday, I, I left Abaco to come to Spanish Wells to uh, get my son and family some normalcy. Uh, it is total devastation in our township of Marsh Harbor and a lot of the settlements around the area, as far north as Cooperstown to Crown Haven to Green Turtle to Guana to Hope Town. Uh, there's many other settlements that were, were ravaged by uh, Dorian, including um, our sister island to the north, Grand Bahama. So most tourists might be familiar with Grand Bahamas, but you live on the island of Abaco and uh, how many islands are there and were all of them affected equally? Um, not, not so much. The, the southern islands of the Bahamas were okay, but in Abaco, the going south from Cherokee uh, was, was not really hit too hard. Um, they did have hurricanes, hurricane force winds uh, some trees down, but they did not uh, suffer what we suffered in Marsh Harbor going north. Well, I suppose that's good news for some who were not as strongly affected, but uh, there were, give us the latest count. Uh, you told me before the program, or maybe 43 have perished and that is confirmed. Uh, and what is your guess that, for how many are missing? That is confirmed from the Bahamas government, uh, the central government, their statement, their official statement was uh, 35 in Abaco and eight in Grand Bahama. I expect that number to climb over the next couple of days. In terms of how many people were missing, that's gonna be a very hard number to give in an estimation because of the undocumented um, immigrants that lived in our area. Uh, you know, we had a, a community of close to four to 6,000 um, immigrants in a, in, in a shanty town. Well, I imagine the construction in shanty towns with undocumented migrants are um, not up to code, as we would say. Uh, I, I heard a statement from your prime minister that the code requires that real buildings must survive 150 mile an hour winds. And yet Hurricane Dorian swirled at sustained winds of 185 miles per hour and gusts up to 220 miles per hour, literally destroying everything that was not built superior to the code and of course the destruction and deaths would be far worse in the shanty towns where people live in whatever structure they can build with their own hands. Um, but you're saying you live in Abaco and there were 35 deaths in your island. That, that sounds like it was the hardest hit. 
it it was one we were one of the hardest hit um settlements in that area uh marsh harbor dundas and murphy town um they are M murphy and dundas are neighbors to our north um marsh harbor and you know a lot of our houses were built up to code and i can guarantee I can guarantee you, for example, in my neighborhood, my house with my wife and my son, we lost a couple ridge shingles, but everyone else in my neighborhood uh, had severe damage. Um, my next door neighbor, his roof was uh, destroyed by a tornado that ended up falling on him. And, you know, they were calling for me and I kept on hearing this was during the eye. I kept on hearing my name being called and wondering who was calling me. And they were, they needed help to get their son out of uh, the house. Um, he ended up being medevaced to the States where he underwent surgery on his leg. And, you know, thank, thank, thank the good Lord and God that he is all right. Um, they removed wood chips out of his, out of his leg, but they also, um, you know, did some tests to make sure he didn't have any, uh, what type of bacteria, you know, or infection he had. Well, thank God for good neighbors and it's the strength of love and the community that neighbors helping neighbors are ultimately the only way to recover from this. We need to take a short break, but before we do, I wanna put the, the website that you are recommending donations go to headknowlesbahamas.com, that's with a K in the middle, H-E-A-D-K-N-O-W-L-E-S, Bahamas.com. You are not the, the spokesman for this group, but you recommend them for good charity, why? At this point in time, any, any charity or donations that the people wanna make, I recommend Headline Knowles or Rotary International. Um, I, I personally, and I know I will get some, some trouble for this, but I do not recommend NEMA. Um, it, it seems that the goods do not get properly distributed. I understand. Let's take a short break and more with Roscoe Thompson from the Bahamas. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. If you've watched our program, you know that we stand with Israel as God's chosen people. We need you to sign a petition today. Why? Because did you know that even as Iran is now developing 800 mile range cruise missiles, could be nuclear tip very soon, that our US Congress has now three brand new freshman Congresswomen, we call them the three anti-Semitic musketeers, Ocasio-Cortez and two Muslims, Talib and Omar. And they are influencing Nancy Pelosi to have the most anti-Semitic Congress in years. We need to stand with our friends in Israel and that's why we're asking you to sign a petition. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Don't divide Jerusalem, stand with Israel and stand up to the United Nations. We will fax it to the Congress, but you need to sign today. Take a stand, visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign our petition today. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How do we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30 day prayer manual, how to liberate the world in 30 days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org or write to the address on your screen or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps and I'm joined again by Roscoe uh, Thompson, who is, uh, Roscoe, I, I didn't really get your bio, your introduction. Uh, where do you stand in government? I am the chairman of local government for the Marsh Harbor Spring City Township. I also sit on 
the district council for Marsh Harbor, Dundas, and Murphy Town, the central area that was actually hit. Um, one of the hardest places it was hit. And you were, uh, you said the 14th generation. Uh, how many years since your family came from Britain? Um, we, we actually came via New York and North Carolina. We were loyalists. Um, on that side, we wanted to stay loyal to the queen, king and queen when the, uh, the revolutionary, when the war broke out. Um, and that's, uh, we've been here ever since. Well, we won't hold that against you all these years later, but <laughs> we are so glad to know you now and have a friend, of course. Great Britain is, I think, America's greatest ally along with Israel. Has the crown been helpful to you and to the Bahamas uh, since this disaster? Yeah, they they had a, a boat, I forget the name of it, but it was behind Eleuthera and it was being sent up to help with the medical and any relief that they, that we had, um, they were they were some of the first on the scene, and also I have to command the U.S. Coast Guard uh, for the medevacking of the critically injured during um, Dorian. If it wasn't for the U.S. Coast Guard, uh, we would we would have a lot more deaths than what we did uh, to the brave souls, and I have a lot of friends that uh, are, are part of the Coast Guard. And my thanks goes out to them. My thanks goes out to the President of the United States, um, Donald Trump, for everything that he did to, to get help here to the Bahamas and to Abaco and the Grand Bahama. Well, I'm thankful for the special relationship you share with America and also with the Christian community here in America. Of course, one of our dear friends, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe was a nationally renowned evangelist who attended here Oral Roberts University and led a great church in Grand Bahamas and uh, or in Nassau, you said, uh, and he has since passed on, but uh, Christian ministries are now carrying on the, the ministry of helping in the hospitals, helping in the clinics, helping with the relief efforts. I'm sure Youth with a Mission will send one of their mercy ships, but I'm also impressed that uh, the Royal Navy has responded. Boris Johnson, the prime minister over there with the permission of the queen has sent uh, relief efforts to support what the US Coast Guard is doing. Is, is it gonna take all hands on deck, maybe some big government and some Christian charity and, and maybe just neighbors, or, or is it more of neighbors helping neighbors? It, it's going to take it's it, it's going to take everybody um, from the U.S. to Great Britain to any aid that we can get to help rebuild and do what we need to do to get our infrastructure uh, to get electricity, running water. It, it's going to be a joint effort. One of my biggest uh, concerns was, you know, the storm as it passed. We could have had forces coming on the ground, when they were medevacking the people out, they could have been bringing in the defense force or, you know, forces to help with the control after the hurricane, because we had a lot of looting that went on that really destroyed um, a lot of our town. Well, talk about the looting there, because I imagine some people are just trying to get food, trying to get clean water, but there's also an opportunity for crime where people's valuables are not safe or have been scattered. And is there a great security presence? What is the Bahamian government doing to to keep the peace and order? Up, up until yesterday, um, before I left, there was very little patrolling going on on our island. They were at the government clinic. They were at the airport and at the complex and at Maxwell's, but actually patrolling through the town, you know, you had people stealing washer and dryers. I could understand the food and, you know, the water which they need, but people were, there was an incident where they broke into the gun safe at Abaco Hardware. Um, you know, there were instances of people being, you know, held up. 
uh, and you didn't have the presence. And, and for three and a half days, I walked around looking for NEMA, um, for their command center, to get information from central government, what their plans were, what do you need me to do, what do you need us in local government to do. You have us here on the ground. You know, this is your way of uh, getting the information out. And there was no information coming in to us. And a lot of people ended up panicking and ended up leaving, you know, one, because of the chaos and the, the lack of law and order that was in the town. And then at the same time, with all the, this, with all the missing people in the, the mud, they were worried about diseases breaking out or, you know, if, if something might happen. So people, people got scared and they, you know, decided to go to different islands, Spanish well, to Nassau. Um, you know, people went to uh, Cherokee, which is in South Abaco, Sandy Point, Casuarina, Bahama, Palm Shores. Um, Marsh Harbor right now is, is, a, is, is like a ghost town. Uh, the people in the Keys in Hopetown, Manowar, Guana Key, and Green Turtle Key, you know, Quite a few of them stayed uh, because they're on an island by themselves and they're they're there. But Marsh Harbor was a little little bit different because we had a bigger uh, community, a bigger shanty town community, and people were people were scared. Well, thank you for that update. We understand that. Uh, this group called NEMA, maybe as a private organization, is not being responsible with with the money or or with the efficiency that these other groups you recommend. Again, we're gonna put up the website for headknollsbahamas.com. If Americans want to donate, please don't give to our ministry today. Give directly to the, the charity on your screen, headknollsbahamas.com, or give to your local Rotary Club. There are Rotary organizations in every city in America that will be supporting the Bahamian relief effort. Uh, Roscoe, let's take one more short break and I'll come back and uh, he's doing the Lord's work right now. Let's, let's have a word of prayer after this. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Reading today's headlines, doesn't it seem sometimes like the world is unreal? We hear about rumors of wars and we see legislative and cultural battles here in America. But where is our hope? I think it's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're offering now a, a DVD series led by family ministry leader Vince Dacchioli, Real Christianity in an Unreal World. It behooves us to really understand what does it mean to be relevant as a Christian and to be real and to spread the gospel in a way to where more and more people will, be in, will embrace it and move yeah. in the right direction. We can send you the entire DVD series, which is three-part teaching with Vince and a bonus of my personal testimony for a suggested donation of just $30 if you call now at 866-Obey-God or write to the address on your screen or visit PrayInJesusName.org. We wanna rush you this important teaching to ground your faith in real Christianity. I'm Dr. Chaps, I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car. You can watch the video on your smartphone. Visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms. Visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Peter, I'm sorry, Roscoe Thompson. Roscoe Thompson is live from the Bahamas. In fact, on one of the hardest hit 
Islands of Abaco is his hometown where his family has lived for 14 generations. Roscoe, remind us of the history of the Bahamas, um, a former British colony and what happened after that? Um, in 1973, of course, at that time, I was only two years old. Um, <laughs> But we want, and and just so you know, I had I don't want to say the best birthday present, but my birthday was September first, and that was my gift was Dorian on September first. Wow! Uh, but the Bahamas, the Bahamas, one that gained their independence in 1973, and we have been a independent colony. We are still part of the Commonwealth uh, of you know we're the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, but we recognize that other Commonwealth countries like Canada and other islands in the uh, South and England. So we, we are part of the Commonwealth. We, we have, we are a Westminster system. Um, we are not a true democratic as in the US. Um, it's, I guess it's a form of a democracy. I believe it. And, and there are also local governments like the one in which you serve um, your position there as chairman of the local council is equivalent to a small town mayor, is it not? Similar, yes, sir, correct. And you, and you would think that they would keep us up to date in what was going on and what we could do to assist central government, you know, to squash rumors, to, you know, keep some control and order, you know, but we, we never received anything officially, never. Well, there seems to be a need for better organized government and uh, you know, still being under the British system, thankfully you have good roads, good hospitals, and there are uh, many existing structures in place where uh, the, the recovery will take a long time, but at least you have a starting point. Correct, I mean, we do, we, you know, very grateful for life and that, you know, we did, you know, we were, we were spared, but there is a lot of rebuilding to do and you know, and as soon as we have the all clear, we will head back to Abaco to start rebuilding, you know, our town because that that's my home, you know, and it's a lot of other people's homes too. It is, I find it fascinating. Uh, you told me before the program that when Bahamas became independent, they established their own currency but your currency, uh, I think it's the, the Bahamian dollars are pegged to the United States dollars at uh, one for one value. One, one for one value. I cannot tell you how we have maintained that. Um, <laughs> I, just thank, I just thank God that, you know, since I've been around, we, we, it's always been dollar for dollar. You know, now you can't take our money back to the US and spend like that, but we can take, you can bring your money here and spend. And you know, while I have everybody on, let's remember Abaco and Grand Bahama are just two islands in the Bahamas. We have other islands like Bimini and Nassau and Long Island and Ragged Island, Mayaguana, Acklands, Crooked Island, many different islands through the Bahamas. Please, you know, if you're wanting to come visit us, those islands are still up and functioning. You know, there that's another way that you can help us. So we are not calling for a halt to any tourism. If you had plane tickets or uh, maybe a cruise coming up, please go to the Bahamas and spend your money. They will need yeah. to grow the economy even after this temporary uh, destruction is, is maintained. It may even hasten the recovery. Um, Roscoe, I wanna say thank you to you for your Christian leadership in your hometown and uh, we wanna offer a word of prayer and a word of support. And as a former Navy chaplain, uh, I love the sea, I love visiting foreign ports, uh, and I love Jesus. So would you mind if I said a word of prayer? No, but before you do, I would like to say to your listeners and the people, I read up on you and I appreciate you making that stance that you did thank against you. your your superiors. Um, and I, I, I am here with you now to bow, bow in prayer, I thank you. All right, let us pray. Father in heaven, we love you. And because you are in us and you, Jesus, you command us to love our neighbor, especially the poor. Father, we pour out our hearts like a river to the people of the, the Bahamas. 
and other places in, in Florida, Georgia, uh, the Carolinas, uh, Virginia, and other places where natural disasters just destroy property and, and take lives. Father, we pray for the survivors, uh, that their grief will be short in some way, that you will bring them com comfort and healing, and that we will be responsible as their brothers and sisters for the work of rebuilding. And Father, we take that responsibility seriously and we ask people to donate. But more importantly, Father, we ask that your love would shine through our charity, that your love would shine toward the poor, and that ultimately they would see the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the love that we show neighbor for neighbor. God bless Roscoe and his efforts in the local government there. God bless the people of the Bahamas and give them relief. We pray for true recovery and relief from what the devil has stolen from them. I pray that you restore it a hundredfold in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Roscoe, we have just one minute left. I'll give you the final word. I just would like to say thank you to you, but I also would like to say thank you to the, the Spanish Wells community of Eleuthera, um, the people in Nassau, Head Knowles, and a lot of other Bahamians and second homeowners uh, from the states that have been flying supplies in, bringing it over by boat and doing everything. Um, and I hope this has opened up our government's eyes and to be more prepared because I don't blame the government for the hurricane, but I blame them for their reaction time and getting people on the ground and getting things covered up. And I thank God that, you know, me and my family, we were able to make it out of, of March Arbor alive. Amen. Again, the website, headknowlesbahamas.com. That's with a K in the middle. Head, K-N-O-W-L-E-S, bahamas.com. Thank you to Roscoe Thompson, we're out of time, but our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Please sign up for one of our free emails today. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.